Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. I know it's been a long time and quite a long time. I think last time I posted a video, at least recorded one, was right before the 160th anniversary of Gettysburg. And that is, that was almost uh, six months ago now, and I think a little bit overdue for a, a new video, so I'm planning to pick up the upload schedule. It's just reenacting seasons, but a little dull lately, but good news, starting later February, I'm going to have three reenactments all within a month of each other, so stay in tune, or not February, March. At March, I'm going to have three reenactments all within a month of each other, so stay tuned for that. It'll be exciting. But, um, yeah, reenacting season. Other, just this kind of past winter, fall has been kind of dead, for me at least, where I am. But anyway, just decided to, you know, start back a new video with haversack packing and how I like to pack it when campaigning or just any reenactment in general. So first, starting the outside. Got 10 cup. Pretty much every reenactor I know does this north and south. A lot of real soldiers did it too. Cause you know, easy. You don't have to spend or you don't have to use so much space in your haversack for a cup when you can just hook it outside of the strap. And uh, for me, I have two cups. I have this one and then I have a slightly bigger one. And the bigger one I actually keep, or the other one I keep on my knapsack strap which is also pretty handy. So if you have more than one cup, you can just hook them on your knapsack if you already have one on your haversack. So, got that there. Let's open this up. Let me try to prop this up a little bit. There we go. So let's start. What do we got in here first? Let's, yeah, it's quite full. So I like to go from most useful on the top down to, or like what, what I would need immediately on the march. Let's start here. Pocket knife, nothing special, but definitely a very important piece of equipment for any reenactor at any era. You always need a pocket knife because, you know, it's a great utility tool, whether you're cutting string, cutting meat. I do eat with this sometimes. If I'm cutting stuff like salt pork and stuff, I will eat with this. And, uh, you know, in case Johnny Reb gets a little too close, then you could try this, but wouldn't recommend it. All right, next we got my little kind of hodgepodge sewing kit right here. I actually, this was a part of my trousers I got a while ago that were too long. Or uh, No, actually, I think that it might have been either a piece of trousers that were too long or just an old piece of trousers that didn't fit me. Either way, I didn't need the end of the trousers, and so I just cut the both legs of the trousers up to a certain point I got a couple strips of this and then just sewed it all together so a little button on there and yeah i keep all my sewing material in there great little use of old clothing you might not need just sew it up into a bag all right next very important piece especially if you're reenacting up north or just in the winter gloves and specifically for a rifleman Finger lifts gloves. Very, very important. Obviously, they keep your fingers warm, or keep your whole hand warm. And since they're fingerless, you can still operate your rifle and any other gear with pretty much the same efficiency as if you weren't wearing any gloves. These have kept me warm for pretty much every time I've worn them. And would definitely recommend gloves because I remember first reenactment I did, it was winter, I didn't have gloves, and my hands were shaking like it was it was probably in the low 20s almost and me as a living in texas right now it's a little cold and at that reenactment i was just my hands were just like this trying to grab the cap and put it on living nightmare all right what do we got next ah these are pretty cool um sometimes i use this sometimes i don't pretty much a swiss army knife but civil war style and it's just for eating so you got your Got your fork, got your knife, got your spoon. And cool thing about this is that it does separate if you push down on one of these ends. I'm trying to remember how to how you do this. Oh, there it is. There, there it goes. You can actually separate these, and so you can have a separate knife. Well, separate knife, and then separate knife and or fork and spoon. 
Well, and then when you want, you can just. Okay, this is a little, this is a little difficult with one hand, so I'm just gonna leave it. All right, what do we got next? Let's go this. Cleaning rag, cheap. Would always recommend this for any black powder reenactor. Get a really cheap cloth because you are going to be cleaning your musket a lot and it's going to be dirty. Especially if you're firing more than like 20 rounds, your entire barrel is just going to be solid black by the end of it. And most, pretty much all these stains right here, this is all from one reenactment. It, it was three days of fighting though, so pretty much I guess you could say three reenactments. Three reenactments all in one time period, but yeah. All of this was from the Gettysburg 160th alone. All of it. You're gonna be cleaning a lot of a lot of rust, especially when you're camping outside with your weapons, you're gonna be cleaning a lot of rust in the morning when you wake up, and a lot of powder after you fight. And so would definitely bring one of these, it's worth it. And also it marks as something good when you like fill the barrel with boiling water, then you can just kinda clump this up, put it on the end, and then you know do the do the shake as I call it. Next, so this this is a kind of a personal preference. I usually in battle I like to keep my canteen half in the haversack because when it's on my canteen it just bounces around like this. I can never get it to secure to the top of my canteen and it, it just bounces around and gets annoying, gets in the way. I like to just keep it right in there and it doesn't take too much space so it's not like it matters next oh yes heart attack a whole lot of heart attack too yeah i like to keep at least five pieces i don't eat all these pieces sometimes i'll give it off to other people but yeah definitely a firm believer in the always keeping heart attack easily accessible I made all this stuff, very easy to make, very quick to make. I wouldn't say quick, it's quick to prep it. It takes a while to bake, but pretty fun to make, super easy and yeah, great little haversack food. Let's, let's see, all right, next up we got paper. You know, nothing special, just some paper, whether you're gonna be writing letters, whether you're going to be writing orders, if you're an officer, you know, you can write orders to other commanders, you can write letters, or you could just write, or you could sketch, or whatever you want, you know, just good, good to always have paper, you can either have paper, or you could do what I do sometimes, where I have a paper in my haversack, and then I have an entire book in my knapsack, both are pretty useful, but yeah, always keep some sort of writing material. Uh, next, this is a little reflective lantern. These things are pretty cool. I have my uh, little candle, these wax candle, some Lucifer matches. Always get some, both candles and matches. And the cool thing about this, since it's a metal tin, it, when you light the candle, it actually reflects off some of the light. And when you kind of bend it in this way, it reflects from two places. So it makes a pretty nice light source inside of the, inside of the tin. Let's see, what next? Little bag, little cotton bag. I use this for a whole lot of stuff. It's And it's really tightly woven, which is nice. So you can store stuff like sugar, salt, baking soda, flour, whatever in here, and you don't have to worry about it leaking out at all. Uh, but yeah, you can store pretty much whatever small food, whether it be coffee beans or like all the uh, rice or any of the other things I mentioned. So, Definitely recommend taking soap, you know, whether it be for uh, washing your hands, washing um, stuff off your gear, washing your hair, washing your face, whole number of uses for soap. And uh, yeah, pretty nice pack of soap. It's natural soap too, so it doesn't smell that strong either. I like to get something that's usually shaving brush, you know, uh, I don't normally shave during reenactments, but sometimes I'll use it for other things, and if I do need to shave, then I'll use this. But I always just keep it in there. Alright, next thing. Now I got some leather straps, shoelaces, and whatnot. Always, always keep, especially if you're Civil War reenacting, always keep a leather strap like this long or whatnot. 
because it all is in your cleaning your rifle. When you're ramming patches down and whatnot, and your ramrod gets stuck, which it has for me many times in other reenactors, it'll get stuck down there. And you'll try to yank it out with your fingers, it won't work. So what you'll have to end up doing is getting a leather string, kind of overlapping it around the thread, pulling tight on both ends, and then trying to jerk it out. There, there are videos on YouTube about it, on how to like get it unstuck. I think uh, Studio T reenacting has a really good video on how to get your ramrod unstuck and it works. All right, next, got a mirror, pretty nice mirror. You know, it, it does what you'd expect a mirror to do. Next, pencil. You know, it's when you buy these, they just come, they look like that on both ends, so you'll have to get your pocket knife or whatever and just cut off the end. Yeah, nice pencil. I haven't used that one much. Right, next, we got the handkerchief. Very, is that next or that's the last? This is last. Okay, your handkerchief. Pretty self explanatory. You can use it for whatever. I use it for cooking, cleaning, sneezing, coughing. Pretty much anything that an handkerchief should be used for, especially cooking. So if you're grabbing like hot pans and stuff, you won't give yourself a third degree burn in a reenactment. Those are not fun, I can assure you. And yeah, that's pretty much what I like to keep in my knapsack. You won't, or not knapsack, haversack. You will also notice that I don't have the liner in here. That's why I usually kind of take out the liner and actually use the haversack liner as kind of a food you know, a food bag. I keep a lot of foods in there, whether it be hardtack, salt pork. I just put it on that cotton bag and just stuff it in there in my knapsack. But yeah, this is this is how I pack my haversack right here. So I hope you all enjoyed. Stay tuned for more videos coming up soon, hopefully. And yeah, see you in the next one.